Our first story is from NBCNews.com. Police officer charged with murder and shooting of black man at gas station. The Texas Department of Public Safety said that a preliminary investigation indicates the officer's actions were not objectionably reasonable. I think you meant unobjectionably reasonable, but that's okay. It's a, a Texas police officer fatally shot a black man has been arrested and charged with murder. The officer, Sean Lucas of the Wolf City Police Department, did not take reasonable action in the encounter that killed Jonathan Price, 31. The Texas Rangers sent a statement. Lucas Bond was set at $1 million. Jail records show his family has said he had intervened Saturday night in a fight between a man and a woman at a gas station before the shooting. Lucas responded to a disturbance call about a possible fight at about 8.24 p.m. According to the statement, Lucas attempted to detain Price, who resisted in a non-threatening posture and began walking away. Lucas, 22, used a stun gun before shooting Price, who was taken to a hospital and died. The Texas Rangers said, quote, the preliminary investigation indicates that the actions of Officer Lucas were not objectionably reasonable. Uh, I guess in the sense they use objectionable, objectionable in, a, in, in a slightly different sense. Um, as Merritt said, uh, this is the attorney for Price's family. When police arrived, I'm told he raised his hand and attempted to explain what was going on. Police fired tasers at him and when his body convulsed from the electrical current they perceived as a threat and shot him to death. Wow. So there are a couple of cool, uh, I'm sorry, cool. Uh, a couple of more takeaways from this story. Hey, if you're not a threat, if you're acting peacefully, you could be lying on the ground, face down on the ground with your hands and legs spread out, totally prone. And if a cop wants an excuse to shoot you, I mean, there are plenty of ways they can come up with them, but apparently now, they can tase you, and if your body convulses, well, then you're resisting arrest and possibly a threat, and then they can shoot you because the taser is obviously not working. Now, fortunately, in this case, the officer's not going to get away with it. Too many cameras, too much accountability. But we saw in the uh, case with Brianna Taylor recently where the cops were not charged except for one with uh, a, a a charge basically negligent negligent discharge of a weapon careless endangerment something like that or reckless endangerment but no charges for that yeah, killing brianna taylor and you go really government Re really police you think you can keep pulling shit like this and we're not going to notice we're going to respect your authority and every time there's a case where a cop murders or injures an innocent person and is not held accountable, it sends two very important, dangerous messages. One, cops can act with immunity. If you, It's so easy for cops to cover things up. But hey, even if you can't, if you can say, hey, you were sort of following procedure or, or training or whatever, no liability, no criminal charges. Maybe, I mean, oftentimes the typical response in, in recent history has been, oh, one of our officers did something bad. We're going we're gonna to take them off the street. We're going to put them on desk duty until we investigate and figure this out. And then we're going to investigate ourselves and we're going to tell you that we did nothing wrong. And an officer gets, you know, temporary desk duty and a note in their file and back out on the streets. Or what's worse is they get paid leave. That's right. And I, I mean, gee, this is, I, I, I know this still happens. I haven't heard it with any, uh, you know, super prominent stories lately, which I, I suppose uh, is, that's, is a really good sign. But what does it tell a, a cop when it's like, hey, if you fuck up on the job and you shoot somebody by accident, we're going to give you a paid vacation. And then we're going to investigate ourselves and tell everybody that we did nothing wrong. So we're not yet 
at the point where we have turned this corner of police accountability in America, but we're turning it. And it's, it's really exciting. And it's one of these things that that's exciting. If you, if you have the luxury that, that we do of being able to follow the news this closely, you go, wow, wow. The police state is becoming significantly less vicious, more accountable. That's really cool. That's a good thing. Uh, I, I would say we're, I don't know, like Churchill might say, uh, towards the end of the beginning of the end of police reform in America, of this phase of police reform, of just getting past the legacies of racism and arbitrary enforcement of victimless crime laws and tax laws, of course, which are, you know, stealing for government, basically uh, stealing on behalf of politicians. And that's not most law enforcement, obviously, but if they weren't able to point guns at peaceful people, they wouldn't be able to collect taxes. That's kind of how it works. So this might not be the kind of thing that you notice conscientiously in your experience. But I think you could say that you have already noticed a shift. If you're at least as long in the tooth as myself at age 38, I remember dealing with police before body cams were a thing. I now have an active lawsuit against a cop who dropped me on my head in custody. Explains a lot, doesn't it? Uh, this was in New Orleans. And we have body camera footage of it. Now, the crazy thing is, this happened last, I think it was last February, a year and a half ago, still working its way through the courts. And in my case, you know, I had a concussion. Um, certainly permanent effects, uh, not, not from the injury itself, but from the arrest. And I mean, if I had been working a wage slave job and had to do three nights in jail, well, you just lost your job, probably. Your family that depended on you didn't have you there for those three days. There, There's so many other consequences that still have to be addressed. But the end of the beginning of the end, as I would describe it, where we are now, is that I think we have achieved, one, a certain level of awareness in the United States about police brutality. I mean, the basic fact that you as the, the average American is 50, according to government numbers, and it could be a lot higher, 50 times more likely to be killed by a cop than by a terrorist. Yeah. Now, obviously, the statistic needs a lot of explanation. How many of those people shot by cops were justified? Well, I would say none of them. You're the fucking police. You have the money for drones to drop cargo nets out of the sky or shoot stun guns at people from a distance or poison darts to disable them, like tranquilizers. There's no excuse. Uh, except criminal has a gun and is about to pull the trigger and shoot someone else. And the only way to disable them is to kill them. Other than that, very, very rare. I mean, just from a security perspective, very, very, very rarely is that actually physically justified. And one of the things that I'm looking forward to that I think will be most important for America in this coming phase of, of police reform that you might say we've already started is an appropriate use of non-lethal weapons and escalation of force uh, appropriately when necessary. And even more importantly, training and practices of de-escalation because police know that now the incentives have changed and they will be held accountable for when they commit crimes under the color of law. And that's not true yet. Police all over this country, not just on the surface, enforcing victimless crime laws, but running drugs, committing violence with their own evidence locker rackets, police still get away with a lot of evil in the United States. And with, with a case like this, there are two ways of looking at it. One, you could say, like, because like, if, if, if there was one cop 
on a, on a major city police force who just decided he's not going to wear pants from now on while on the job, right? He's walking around, dong, hanging out in the breeze. You know, the police department is going to go, no, fire that crazy fucker. Not because he's committing a crime, not because they believe in holding themselves accountable, but because he's an embarrassment to the department and bad for their credibility and therefore their sense of authority in the community. So if a cop murders someone in an incident where they can use the judge in the case or they can use the court system, and th th this is why police departments have, you know, PR functions and do press conferences. So they can go out and say, you know, this person doesn't represent us. We're handling it. He's fired. He's out of here. And they don't fire. Think about, again, what is the purpose of the police force? To enforce the will of politicians on the people. The sort of artificial reason is to protect and serve. And then the Supreme Court ruled, no, you don't have any obligation to do either of those things. So it's just empty rhetoric. They are there to enforce laws written by politicians. And there's a, there, there's a large function. I don't mean to deny the legitimate services provided by police. And that, you know, when they go, oh, I guess it's the firemen who, or firefighters who go save cats out of trees. What is it that the police do? Oh, well, like the roadside assistance stuff that would be better handled by AAA anyhow. Uh, responding to mental health crises, um, which would be better handled by people who don't shoot dogs at front doors. You know, they have things like that, but there are legitimate services uh, being delivered by police. But that's not the purpose, because if that was the purpose, they would let other groups handle those functions and use police just for forced as in violent or coercive public safety services and enforcement of the natural law. But they, they take on all these other functions because it makes them more effective as an exploitation racket. They can justify, the, how dare you want to defund the police? Look at all these essential functions they perform. It's like, okay, let's defund the illegitimate functions and only have police forming, performing legitimate functions. Oh, well, duh. So anyway, to bring it back to this story, and I know this is a this is sort of a long uh, background explanation to all of this, but this seems like a case where it could be kind of both. Uh, black, oh, excuse me, police officer charged with murder and shooting a black man at gas station. If the police department, the Texas Department of Public Safety, uh, really wanted to go all out and say that they wanted to defend this officer, uh, they might look at these videos and say, well, there's one point when he was convulsing with the Taylor taser, you know, he raised his hand like this and it looked like he might have had a gun. And then they get a judge to sign off on it and the cop goes back to where he was and that's, that's the deal. Now, maybe this guy's a trouble cop. Maybe the cops, I mean, if you're a police department, your purpose is not to kill random people. In fact, the actual murder like this of random people doesn't serve your general law enforcement purpose because it aggravates community relationships and, and lowers your credibility, makes people less likely to call the police in, in a sense, you, you lose business. Uh, but there, there is, uh, if, if that's the case, if this is kind of uh, one of those cases on the cusp, that, that could have gone either way. Uh, I do think it is a good sign of the times that this officer actually, like, and and it's not just, remember like this, in this case, he didn't just get reprimanded or put on desk duty or paid vacation. He's been arrested and charged with murder. So I know a lot of libertarians aren't gonna like me saying this, but Thank you, Black Lives Matter, for raising the awareness and putting the pressure on police departments in such a way that increases accountability and makes all of us safer. But I'd also have to thank my old friends Pete Ayer and Adamo Freeman, the founders of copblock.org, which has uh, been handed over to other people at this point, 
but for everybody who raises awareness about the dangers that police present, it means that the result is that when something like this happens, whoever in that police department or the Texas Department of Public Safety making this decision, how do we handle this case, now has to consider all of these other factors that just didn't exist 10 years ago. And yeah, we had the we had the technology for body cams, duh, but they weren't widespread. The awareness wasn't as out there. And so to everybody who's contributed to this effort, thank you. Your work in police reform does save lives.